let somebody shout hallelujah. I once told you the testimony of one of our sisters. She had um, cancer of the voice box. The voice box, that's what you used to speak. Then the doctor said that there's only one way to spare her life, and that's by cutting away the voice box. You are not hearing me? Huh? Are you hearing? Engineer, please help us. Can you hear now? Uh -huh, all right. Let me start again. There was a sister, one of our sisters, who had the cancer of the voice box. And the doctor said that the only way to save her life is to cut off the voice box. And that's what you used to speak. So they performed the operation at... Uh, UCH in a body. Very difficult decision. It had to be taken. I went there, I prayed with her in the, on the hospital bed. And I told her that I have a God who can reverse the irreversible. For quite a while, she will when she wants to speak, when she wants to communicate, she will write or send text. Then one day I traveled. I came back. As I was coming out of the car, I saw a woman rolling on the floor. I turned to look at her. I said, ah, it's me, daddy. I can speak again. Your own voice box is still there. Will you open your mouth and praise the Almighty God and give Him glory and give Him adoration and praise Him and bless the King of Kings and bless the Lord of Lords and bless the unchangeable changer. Will you give Him glory? Will you give him honor? Will you give him adoration? Because you can speak. You can speak. Your voice box is there. The almighty God in his infinite mercy has made it possible for you to be able to speak again. To glorify. To glorify his holy name. To glorify his holy name. Go ahead, praise him. Today we are here to praise the almighty God. We are thanking him for everything he had ever done for us, particularly throughout last year. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Bless the ancient of this. Bless the king of kings. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy. He's worthy to be adored. It's worthy to be magnified. Thank you, my Lord. Blessed, blessed, blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, ancient of days. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you. We just want to say thank you today. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the 
glory we give you heart Jesus we give you Savior, our healer, our provider, our defender, our promoter, our hope of glory, our all in all, we give you all the glory. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for 2019. Thank you that in spite of everything the devil planned, we survived. Thank you that we are here again this year. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. My Father and my God, we are here just to thank you today. And I know if we thank you enough, you will do greater things. The grace to be grateful, like never before, Father, please give unto us. The ability, Lord God Almighty, to sing, to praise you, to dance, to glorify your name. Please, don't take it away from us. And all those who might be listening to us all over the world who cannot speak. Please, Lord, even before we finish this service, open their mouths. And those who cannot hear, Please open their ears. Those who cannot see, open their eyes. Those that the doctor said there's nothing more they can do for them, please, Lord, today, reverse the irreversible. As we pray through today, fearful blessings, Father, pour it down upon us. As for your children who have been faithful throughout last year in the payment of their tithes, in the giving of their offerings, my Lord and my Savior, this year, embarrass them with your blessing. <laughs> Rebuke devourers for their sake. Let this year be a year of success. Thank you, my Father and my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Unless somebody shout. Happy New Year to every one of you. One to six, Psalm 34, 
from verse 1 to 6. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord had him, and saved him out of all his troubles. If God had ever answered your prayers, shout hallelujah. Why should we thank God? Reason number one is that God commanded it. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, it says, Everything give thanks. Because this is the will of God concerning you. In everything, give thanks. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, Colossians 3, verse 17, it says, Whatsoever you do, in word or in deed, do it in the name of Jesus Christ, giving thanks. Whatsoever you do, give thanks. If you are eating, give thanks. Why? Because there are those, those who want to eat and they have nothing to eat. Two, there are those who have a lot that they could eat, but sickness won't allow them to eat it. And I'm sure you have heard of people who died on the dining table before. Uh, in case you don't know, I can give you several examples. Sat down to eat, took one muscle, choked to death. You have been eating throughout last year. You didn't choke. The food went down correctly. And like I said to, to those of us who are the only go service, and some of us, we don't have money, but we can eat. If you are one of such people, will you shout hallelujah with me? I had a friend, one of the richest people Nigeria had ever known. By the time he died, he had $256 million in Australia. Not to talk of America, far away Australia, $256 million. The only food he could eat was milk, in spite of all that money. I mean, I don't have to, I don't have to have 56 million dollars anywhere. But don't believe those who say Pastor Adeboye doesn't eat. If you want to see what Pastor Adeboye could do, invite me to your, your house for lunch. And make sure there's plenty of pandediam, plenty of chicken and fish. And, and right there in your sitting room. You don't have to go to any church. You will see the glory of God right there. Those of you who can eat anything, let me hear you shout hallelujah. That you can sleep. You should thank God for that. Whether you believe it or not, there are people who have plenty of money, who have beautiful houses, but can't sleep. I've told you the story of a man who had 14 houses in Ibadan. 
came to me I said sir I was told if you pray for me I'd be able to sleep because he had not been able to sleep for years he said pray for me so I can sleep and then you can have my 14 houses I said ah, Jesus will heal you but I don't want those 14 houses because I want to be able to sleep <laughs> there are some of us we can sleep standing anybody like that here let me hear you shout hallelujah. In everything you do, God commands, give thanks. And then in Philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 to 7, Philippians 4, 6 to 7, it says, be careful for nothing. In other words, don't, don't worry. But in all things, with prayer and supplication plus thanksgiving you just make your request known to God everyone who knows how to say thank you will get their prayers answered that's what God said and then reason number two why you should give thanks apart from the fact that God commanded it is that you have good reasons on your own as an individual to give thanks one of the reasons of course is that you are still breathing Psalm 150 verse 6 Psalm 150 verse 6 says let all things that have breath, breath praise the Lord As, as long as you are breathing, they can't bury you. I told you of the story of one young man who, who went for the, the festival of us in uh, Abuja, was it Kaduna, and they were coming back and they had an accident. And he was in a A coma for a long time but he was breathing he happened to be a Christian once in a while he will come to the surface when he comes to the surface he will shout Jesus and then he will go back into coma and then he will after a long while he will come up again and shout Jesus and the people saw him this fellow had been in a coma for a long time but because he's still breathing they couldn't bury him. And then one day he shouted, Jesus, and opened his eyes. Every one of you that the people thought you have no hope, this year God will surprise them. Because the Bible says, as long as you are still alive, there is hope for you. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 4. Ecclesiastes 9 4 says, even, even a living dog is better than a dead lion. If they call you a dog and you are still alive, say, Thank you very much. I agree that I'm a dog, but I'm still alive. Because when there is life, there is hope. And then when you read Genesis chapter 18 from verse 1 to 14, Genesis 18 from verse 1 to 14, you will discover that as long as you are still alive, a day may come when the Almighty God will change prophecies to a decree. For 25 years, God was promising Abraham and Sarah, you will have children, you will have children, For you will have children. Then a year came when God paid a visit 
and he didn't say one day you will have he said nine months from now the child will come he changed all the prophecies to a decree and i'm standing on this altar today to say every prophecy you have received up to this moment this day they will become a decree Because when you read Isaiah chapter 61 from verse 1 to 3, Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 3, the Bible talked about a particular year. He called it the acceptable year of the Lord. The acceptable year of the Lord. When I read that passage and I was wondering what exactly does that mean, the Lord, the Lord showed me that for the woman with the issue of blood, in Mark chapter 5, you can read the story. You know the story from verse 25 to 34. Her acceptable year came after 12 years. In Luke chapter 13, from verse 11 to 17, Luke 13, 11 to 17, for the woman who was bent double, her acceptable year came after 18 years. In John chapter 5, from verse 2 to 5, verse 2 to 9. For the, the man who was by the pool of Bethesda, his acceptable year came after 38 years. For the man in John chapter 9, from verse 1 to 7, John 9, 1 to 7, the man who was born blind, his acceptable year came after 40 years. For every man there is an acceptable year. I have a feeling deep within me that this might be the acceptable year for somebody. And I am believing God that long before the end of this month, somebody will be shouting hallelujah. Why should I thank God? Because of divine mercy. Lamentation chapter 3, from verse 22 to 23. Lamentation 3, 22 to 23 says, It is of the mercy of the Lord that we are not consumed. He renews this mercy every day, every morning. He will look at us and say, I will be merciful another day. I will be merciful another day. I've been mercy for another day. That's why we are still surviving. It will interest you to know, according to Romans chapter 9, from verse 15 to 18, Romans 9, 15 to 18, that it's not everybody who got mercy. He said, I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. I just happen to be one of them. Is there anybody here too who had received mercy from the Lord? I was telling my wife the other day, I said there are songs, there are songs. There are songs that come directly from God. And you know one of those songs? Gloria, modupe, modupe, moria nuba, modupe, moria nuba, tu ikise kubuinyo, nuria nuba. One more time. Received mercy from the Lord. Let him hear you shout hallelujah. Now, why, why must I thank God for his mercy? Because in that Romans chapter 9, if you read it all the way to verse 18, 
it tells us it is not of him that wills nor of him that runs but of God that shows mercy it is not of him that is able it is not because of your ability your wisdom your connections it is just because of the mercy of God that you are where you are each time I read that passage I always remember an incident that happened when I was at the University of Nigeria Oshuka way back in the 1960s I think this was 1965 there was this girl in our team in the university she was the fastest thing alive at that time I mean she can run so when we were leaving Ushuka for Ibadan for the first Nigerian University Games, we, we were already counting medals. For this girl, we will get gold, no doubt. Then we came to Ibadan, and it was time to run. On your mark, set, go. Immediately she was gone. I mean, she, in those days, it was 100 yards before we began to use meters. Within a very short period of time, she's left the others behind the gap of about 10 yards. And then just about another 10 years to the finishing line, she fell. She got up and fell. She got up and fell. And then she began to crawl towards the finishing line. In the meantime, the fellow who would have been second came first. The one who would have been third came second. The one who would have had no better came third. It's not because you are clever. It's not because you are able. It's not because you are wise. You are where you are because of the mercy of God. If you appreciate the mercy of God, will you shout hallelujah? Psalm 124 from verse 1 to 8. Psalm 124 from verse 1 to 8 tells us if it had not been God on our side, what shall we be saying now? Oh, he said, when men rose up against us, they would have swallowed us up. You think you have no enemies? You must be joking. If you are succeeding, <laughs> you have enemies. If you are a failure, you have enemies. You don't believe me? Ask Batmels. It was an ordinary beggar by the roadside begging. And then he heard that Jesus was passing by and he was crying to Jesus for mercy. To Jesus, not the crowd. And the crowd showed him that day that he had enemies. He told him to shut up. They wanted to block his way, the way of a beggar to deliverance. You, you don't know how many enemies you have? Enemies from your father's house, from your mother's house, from the inner side, from, from in the place of work. There are people who hate you just for the way you walk. Not that you have offended them, they just don't like the way you walk. They say, maybe you swagger. <laughs> but whether the enemy likes it or not, you will swagger them all. Why? Because the Lord is on your side. If you know the Lord is on your side, let me hear you shout another hallelujah. Then I can go on and on, but uh, you know, they are always timing me on an occasion like this. So the, the issue is not even why should I praise God? The issue is how should I praise God? We know we need we must praise him we need to praise him how do i do it 
2 Samuel chapter 6 from verse 12 to 19. 2 Samuel chapter 6 from verse 12 to 19 gives us an example of how to praise God. And this example I took from David. The man who wrote the text that I read to you, the man who said, I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. He, he gave us an illustration. There was this occasion. He, he was taking the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. And then somewhere along the line, there was an accident and somebody died because of the Ark of the Covenant. So he said, ah, no, I didn't know. I didn't know that this act can be this dangerous. So he looked for one man called Obededo. And said, you, if you die, you die. <laughs> he took the Ark of the Covenant and took it to Obededo's house. As soon as the Ark landed in Obededo's house, God began to bless him. Bless him so mightily the whole nation heard about it. So they told David, the fellow you thought was going to die has become the talk of the town. He said, is that so? They said, yes, I go and get my ark. <laughs> he got there and took the ark of the covenant of God. And the Bible said, when they were bringing the ark of the covenant into Jerusalem, David danced with all his might. Now, you need to pay attention to the words there. David was a mighty man of war. I mean, you have to be mighty to be able to kill a lion with bare hands. You have to be really, really mighty to be able to kill, kill a bear with bare hands. With all that might, he danced. But then he did something else. As soon as they take six steps, he will say, stop. I want to sacrifice to God. They will sacrifice. Then they will take another six steps. And they <laughs> will sacrifice again. In modern times, he was spraying money to show his appreciation to God. He wasn't stingy at all. He was over generous when it comes to thanksgiving. And you know how God responded? Years later, David made a terrible mistake. He committed adultery as a king. He used his position, abused his position. Committed adultery, sent for the husband of the woman, arranged for his death. Once the husband was dead, he pretended to be a good king, took the woman and brought it into his house. Yeah, you see, I take care of my servants. When they die in battle, I look after their wives. And God was looking down from heaven. So one day God sent his servant to him. David, such and such happened. A man who had many sheep, went and took a little lamb from a man who had only one and used that one lamb to entertain his guests. David said, in my kingdom, the prophet said, yes. In this my kingdom, while I'm still on the throne, the prophet said, yes. He said, that man is dead. Ah, good. <laughs> the prophet said, you are the man. You did this, you did this, you did this. Ah, David said, I'm in trouble. He said, I have sinned. That's all he said. He has not even said, I am sorry. He didn't even say, I'm going to repent, I'm going to restitute. As soon as he said, I am sorry, the prophet of God said, God has forgiven you. Ah, ah. <laughs> the first time I read that passage, I said, I don't understand this one. Ah, what's going on here? 
And there was nobody to explain it to me, so I had to go to God himself. Will you tell me? Because I know people who have not done one third of what David did. You kill them. This one committed adultery, committed murder. He was a, a hypocrite. And the Almighty God said, I have nobody like him when he comes to praising me. I have plenty of angels in heaven praising me. This one, let him be praising me here on this earth. Yes, I will punish him because I'm a holy God. But kill him, I'm not going to. I've said it before. Anyone who knows how to praise God correctly, one way or the other will make it to heaven. I didn't know that some, there are some people who practically memorized all my sermons. One fellow was talking to me not too long ago. He said, I remember one of your sermons. He said, that one had been keeping me going for a long time. I said, what was it I said in the sermon? He said, you said, if by any chance, God forbid bad thing, but if by any chance you get to heaven and the day is shot against you, he said, you know what you will do to get it. I said, I see. What was it I said? He said, I will stand out there and begin to praise God. I will say, you are the king of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the ancient of days. There's no one like you. Oh, you are the bright harmony star. You are the lily of the valley. You are the rose of Sharon. I said, very soon, God will say, who locked that one out? That fellow belongs here. I will praise my way through. When you praise God acceptably, He will do for you what He will not do for any other person. I can give you other examples. You can take the example of Solomon, the son of David. When he wanted to show his appreciation to God, he offered a thousand burnt offerings. And people were saying, King, your majesty, you, you are overdoing this thing. So you don't know what you are talking about. I know where I'm coming from. My father was an adulterer. My mother was an adulteress of the worst type. And God looked into all this combination and chose me, a, a product of these terrible people, and made me king. He said, my own business. I will praise him. That night, God responded. He said, ah, this boy is like his father. Let me show him too what I can do in return. You mean, you all know this. You know this very well. It's a, it's a principle that the juju uh, drummers or whatever, singers, it's a principle they learned long ago. You go to a party. You borrow money to come to the party. The musician comes and he, he found out your name. Even though you are a messenger in the place of work, he begins to call you a emergency contractor. He, he, he calls you managing director. He, before you know it, you take the money and give it to him. When you want to take the money, your mind is telling you, you borrow this money, you say, shut up. Is anybody here today who wants to praise God? Stand on your feet and shout hallelujah. As for those of you who don't know why we are praising God, the Bible says in Psalm 34 verse 8, Psalm 34 verse 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. We have tasted him. We found him to be good. That's why we are shouting like little babies. That's why we want to praise him. That's why you are going to see traditional rulers dancing this morning. That's why you are going to see professors forgetting their degrees, praising God. Because we have tasted and we found that the Lord is good. So if you are here and you have not tasted him, if you have not given your life to him, you don't know what we are talking about. 
but you can begin to experience it from now on. So I'm going to count from 1 to 10. If you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to taste and see how good the Lord is, come before I say 10. I will pray for you, and from this moment onward, you two begin to see that the Lord is good. I'm counting now. One. Two. Oh, he's a good God. His mercy endure forever. If you have not been on your side, by now you'll be dead. That you are in this new year is because he loves you. Three. Four. Oh yes, come and test him. He is a good God. There's no one like him. He can take care of all your problems. He can put a new song in your mouth. Five. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Six. Thank you, Jesus. Seven. Hurry up, those of you who are coming out, coming from the outside, from the overflow. Hurry up, hurry up. Thank you. Eight. Nine. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Keep coming, keep coming, don't stop. And now those of us who are already in front and those who are on the way, talk to the Almighty God. Tell him, I've come to taste the Lord. I want you to save my soul. I want you to take over my life from now on. I will serve you for the rest of my life. Let everything become new for me, Lord. Please save my soul. Forgive all my sins. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards our new brothers and sisters and intercede for them. Pray that the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also. Talk to the Almighty God that God will give them a brand new beginning. Intercede for them. Intercede for them. And if you want to come, you are not late yet. You can still come. Just make sure you get here before I finish praying. Yes, God bless you. Keep coming. Make this your own day of salvation. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, we want to thank you for your word. And we want to thank you for those who have come forward to surrender their life to you. Please, Lord, receive them. Have mercy on them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. Receive them into the family of God. Let everything become new for them. And from now on, any time they call upon you, answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, those of you who have come forward, I rejoice with you. Because from now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. I promise you, I'll be praying for you. The counselors will please come and attend to them where they are. And just give them a card to fill so that they can return the cards to you. Now the rest of us, are you ready to praise God? I want you to praise him this morning until he will pinpoint you. He says, he's seeking for worshippers. Let him pinpoint you and say, this fellow had praised me more than others. So I'm going to bless him or her more than others this year. 
I want you to just praise God in your own way. Call him by his names, sing unto him, dance unto him, clap unto him. Just show him your own appreciation. Let's go ahead and begin to praise God. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's give him adoration. Let's sing unto him. Let's clap unto him. Let's dance unto him. Let's magnify his holy name. There is no one like him. He reigns forever. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him from the bottom of your heart. Oh yes, thank him that you can speak. Thank him that you are still breathing. Thank him that he has not given you over to the enemies. Thank him that you have obtained mercy. Praise him. Praise him. 